Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk about determining the terminal side of an angle and where it's positive. So what we have to recall is ASTC, all students take calc. A goes in the first quadrant, S goes in the second, T goes in the third, and C goes in the fourth. So what this A stands for is all. This means everything is positive. So we could write everything is positive. What do I mean by everything? I mean sine, cos, tan, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Every single one of these six trig functions are positive. What does S stand for? S stands for sine, S-I-N. So sine, as well as its reciprocal, cosecant, are positive. T stands for, what do you think? Tangent. So in the third quadrant, tangent is positive, as well as its reciprocal, which is cotangent. And in quadrant four, what do you think C stands for? C is cos. So that means cos is positive as well as it's secant. So this chart is for positivity. It shows A is everything is positive. Sine is positive. Tan is positive. Cosine is positive. Okay? As well as the reciprocals in each of the quadrants. So let's see how this relates to a problem. So example number one says, if sine is negative and cosine is negative, in which quadrant does the terminal side of the angle lie in? Well, we want to draw a little chart, ASTC. It's always where you're going to start. Now remember, this is the chart for where everything is positive. Okay? So they're telling us that sine is negative. So if A is where all are positive and S is where sine is positive, then these two quadrants is where sine is positive. So which two quadrants is sine negative? You should be telling me those two. And now it says cosine is negative. Well, again, again, this is the chart for positivity. So A is everything is positive. C is cosine is positive. So if cosine is positive here and it's positive here, then these are the two quadrants where cosine is negative. Now, where do these two quadrants overlap? is quadrant three. So that's the answer to this problem. That in order for me to have sine negative and have cosine negative, we have to be in quadrant three. Okay, example number two. If the tangent of an angle is negative and the secant is positive, in which quadrant does the angle terminate? So again, we're gonna draw A, S, T, C. So they're saying tangent is negative. Again, this is the chart for positive. So where is tangent instead of negative? Let's look for where tangent is positive. Tangent is positive in the all, and tangent is positive where we see a t. So if tangent is positive here and here, it must be negative here and here. And wherever secant is positive, well, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So we need to look for where cosine is positive. Okay, so cosine is positive in the first quadrant and where I see a C. So these two quadrants, where do they overlap? Quadrant four. Okay, just to be clear, S is for secant. That does not mean it's positive here. This is the chart for positives, all, sine, tangent, and cosine. These are the original trig functions, sine, cos, and tan. Okay, let's try example three together, and then you can try four and five on your own. So again, we're going to draw a chart, A, S, T, C. So it says sine of theta is greater than zero. Greater than zero is another way for saying positive. So where is sine positive? Again, if this is a positivity chart, it shows here and here is where sine is positive. And then again, it says secant is less than zero. Less than zero means negative. So where is secant negative? But again, this chart doesn't have secant in it. We have to look for cosine. So where is cosine negative is what we're looking for. We know cosine is positive here and here, so secant must be negative here and here. Where do they overlap? Quadrant two. Okay, why don't you try four and five on your own um, and hit resume for the answer. Okay, here you go. 
it says the first one, where's cosine a negative 0.7? Now, this 0.7 is irrelevant to the problem. They just want to know what quadrant will this angle be in, but it's telling me that cosine is negative. And cosine is negative here and here. Cosecant is greater than zero or positive. And cosecant, CSC, is the reciprocal to sine. So I'm really looking for where is sine positive, which is here and here, and they overlap in quadrant two. And last but not least, number five, where is cosine negative? Again, here and here. And then where is tangent greater than zero? Or where is tangent positive? Here and here. They overlap in quadrant three. Okay, let's move on to the next page. All right, so question number one says, if an angle, if theta is an angle in standard position and point, negative three, four, is a point on the terminal side of the angle, evaluate all six trig functions. Okay, so this may sound a little crazy at first, but let's kind of draw it out just to get an idea of what it looks like. Let's graph that point. Negative three, one, two, three, four. So we'll put it right there. Okay, this is point P. And it tells me that this is an angle in standard position, and this point is on that terminal side of the angle. And I know that when I have an angle, I always have an initial side, and I have a terminal side, or where the angle ends. So they're telling me that this point P is right on that terminal side of the angle. Again, this is the initial, this is the terminal, and this is the angle in which I'm speaking about. Okay, so here's my angle. Now, what we're going to do is use the fact that I can make a right triangle out of here. If I drop down a perpendicular line here and here, here's my right angle. Now I know it doesn't look exact, but it should go over at that three. So this right triangle, which I can maybe make a little bit thicker so you can see it, this is the triangle that I'm speaking about here, okay? So if I went to get to this point, I went over three and then up four, then isn't my distance here three and my distance here four? Absolutely, right? So what do you think I may need? I may need this distance here, or the hypotenuse. So if I use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now remember, c squared is always the hypotenuse. That's why it goes here. So what's this? 9, 16, 25. We get 5, right? So 5 is c. That will go here. So now we have a picture. Now let's read the question. If theta is an angle in standard position and a point, P, is on the terminal side of the angle, which we have here, terminal side of the angle, evaluate all six trig functions. Well, we're always going to assume that if this is the angle in which we're talking about, we could use the idea that, remember the idea of reference angles, that this angle in here is the same value as this in here, if I take sine of it, it's a reference angle. It has the, it allows us to find the same thing. Like sine of 30 is the same as sine of 150, okay? Um, so what is the question asking? The question's asking for us to find all six. So let's start with it. We've got sine theta. We have cos theta. We have tangent theta. And we have our reciprocals. So cosecant theta, secant, and cotangent. And we'd like to find what these values are or what these ratios are. But there's one thing that we have to keep in mind. All students take calc. So what this means is since we are in quadrant two, sine is the only thing that's positive as well as it's reciprocal. So sine and cosecant will be positive where everything else will have a negative in front of it. Okay? So now let's figure out what we got here. So here's theta, and I want to find sine. If it helps, write out so, ka, toa, and maybe we can label the picture. Here's theta. Obviously, 5 is the hypotenuse. 4 is opposite. 3 is adjacent. And 5 is my hypotenuse. Okay? So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So 4 over 5. And cosecant is the reciprocal, so all I have to do is flip it, so 5 over 4. All right, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 3 over 5, but it's negative, right? Negative 3 over 5, and then negative 5 over 3 for secant, flip it. Tangent is optoa, so opposite over adjacent, 4 over 3, 
and negative as well, and then flip it, 3 over 4. And that's it. Those are evaluating all six trig functions. Okay, let's, I'll help you set up number two, and then you can finish it on your own. So it says if secant theta is rad 13 over 2 and tangent is less than 0, evaluate all six trig functions. Okay, well, the first thing we need to do is figure out the quadrant. So quadrant, question mark. Well, it tells me that secant is a positive rad 13 over 2. Okay, so that must imply here that cosine theta is positive. Because remember, secant and cosine are the reciprocals. And then this here tells me that tangent is less than zero, or tangent is negative. So if we just draw this out real quick, A, S, T, C, where is cosine positive? A and C, so here and here. And then where is tangent negative? Well, again, this is positivity chart. So if tangent is positive in A and T, or one and three, then it has to be negative in S and C. So this tells me we must be in quadrant four. So we have to draw a picture for quadrant four. All right. Now, we always have to draw an angle and that ends in quadrant four. So it would be something like that. And we would draw our triangle like we did before, just like this. Here we go and theta in the inside. Again, we can use reference angles because it's the same thing. Okay, so now what do we have? We've got Sokotoa from before, right? So, Ka, and Toa. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, then this is hypotenuse over adjacent. So the hypotenuse in this right triangle down here, the hypotenuse is rad 13, and the adjacent side, which is here, is 2. So in order to find all six trig functions, we may need to find this. So let's do the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared, which we don't know, equals c squared, rad 13. 2 squared is 4. Rad 13 squared, the square root and the radical cancel each other out, 13 minus 4. We get x squared equals 9, take the square root, and we get x equals 3. Okay, so now we have all the information that we need to find sine, cos, which I'll put down here, tan. And then we can flip them for cosecant, secant, and cotangent. First, let's do what we did before, A, S, T, C. So cosine is positive. So cosine and secant will be positive, and these will all be negatives. Maybe this should be an equal sign. Okay, so what do we got here? Sine, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So 3 over rad 13. Cosecant would be rad 13 over 3, negative, of course and cosine adjacent to over hypotenuse so 2 over rad 13 flip it rad 13 over 2 tangent is toa opposite over adjacent so 3 over 2 negative 3 over 2 of course and then flip it negative 2 over 3 now technically these answers are all correct however you don't want to have negative you don't want to have radicals in the denominators of fractions so these two actually need to be rationalized so we multiply top and bottom by rad 13 and we get negative 3 rad 13 over 13 multiply top and bottom by rad 13 we get 2 rad 13 over 13 now when i did that so fast it was because radical 13 times radical 13 is like squaring it. It gets rid of the radical, so it's just 13. All right, if you have any questions, please jot them down and ask tomorrow in class. Have a good night.